Welcome to the first part of this unboxing video for the new Russo-Prussian Cavalry set from Perry Miniatures. Um, so we're going to be having a look at this latest plastic release in all of its glory, uh, getting into the contents of the box, what you get in the box, the different parts and customization options, uh, and the ubiquitous information sheet that comes with them. So without further ado, let's open up one of these boxes and see what's inside. So first things first, this is one of the three boxes that I've purchased. Uh, I got the uh, Brigade deal, which is typically what Perry pr provide for their new plastic miniatures set, which you buy three boxes uh, and you get a free additional miniature, um, which is usually an officer miniature of some type. Uh, in this case, it's a uh, an officer, mounted officer that can be used either as a Russian or a Prussian officer because they've got very similar uniforms, but we'll have a look at that at the end. First of all, we'll open up one of these boxes and have a look at the contents. Uh, so first things first, this is the standard exterior of the box here. Uh, the Peter Dennis artwork, uh, an example of a painted miniature in the bottom right hand side, and how many figures that you get within it, uh, in which case this is 14, which is I think a good amount. And then on the back, uh, as normal, you get an actual size profile of one of the miniatures, uh, a quick guide on how the miniature might go together, uh, and then a few more painted examples of some of the different uh, build types of different types of units. So on the back you've got both Russian and Prussian Jaegers, uh, and then Russian and Prussian Dragoons, um, and there are various configurations and some of the body types you can have. So this is the contents of one of the boxes, uh, and as you can see here, there's a goodly little stack of plastic. Um, first thing I'll do is take out um, the Renadra bases, these will be familiar to anybody that's bought a Perry plastic box set um, from pretty much any of their ranges, um, the standard Renadra bases. Um, I don't really use these to base anything personally, um, but they may come in handy for you, um, or handy for other purposes as well, because you can use them to base all sorts of other things, perhaps markers, um, you know, you can even write things on them and use them as some kind of tokens to indicate whatever you want. Um, sometimes not best to throw out or recycle things straight away, because you could find a use for them, or you might be able to find somebody else that has a use for them. So I'll put those to one side. And the next thing is the information sheet. Now I think these have been getting steadily better in terms of the Perry offerings. I apologise for the glare, I'm in a different setup to normal. Um, and as you can already see here, there's a wealth of information of flags on the front here concerning uh, Russian Dragoons. Now some of these have been single-sided, front and back. Um, some of them have been booklet format with several pages. Uh, this one I already know unfolds. Uh, into what is an A3 poster style format. And you can see the very large volume of information that there is available in here. Um, in this case, this is the Prussian side um, of the leaflet. Um, and it goes through at the top left hand side here, um, the Prussian Dragoons Mounted Volunteer Jaegers, gives you some uniform examples, and gives you some specific large scale painted examples of some of the miniatures as well, um, with some more details for those but it does give you the colours and facings for a variety of all those different regiments. In the Prussian case, it explains the difference between the collet and the Litvaka, um, the Litvaka being the longer coat that comes down to just above the knee, which you can see, for example, here, versus the collet, which is a shorter tunic style thing. Uh, and the Litvaka is generally accepted as being more commonly worn on campaign, but it gives you the option to have either. Uh, and it does point out that in each case, the mounted volunteer Jaegers, um, are very, very similar in their uniform type to their parent regiment, just generally speaking, being in dark green as opposed to the blue. Um, very useful here on the left hand side, a guide to some of the parts, uh, and how some of the bits and pieces fit together for some of the less common pieces that aren't perhaps as obvious. Um, there's a little reminder here that there is a certain type of Russian musket provided for use up to November 1812, which is not for the Prussians, and similarly, a Prussian canteen which is for those uh, units, but not for the Russians. And then it gives you some examples of how some of the parts can go together as well. We'll just have a closer look without the shine, hopefully, like this, of, there we go, there's some of the information a bit closer up of all the different units. Now we'll flip this over and have a quick look at the Russian side of things. So this is the top half, just to make it easier for me to manoeuvre. And you can see this does open slightly booklet style when you've folded the A3 together. And it runs through all the different types of Prussian Dragoons, uh, not Prussian, excuse me, Russian Dragoons. Um, their colours, facings, 
uh, and a few little peculiarities of some of the different specific regiments or when they might have changed their names or converted, for example, to Jaegers. Um, there's a little note here saying that these four regiments carried curved sabres rather than more straight palash style blades, um, assume, uh, carried by sort of medium to heavy cavalry in most nations. And then on the back, uh, you've got the remainder of the Dragoon colours here, an explanation of Russian mounted Jaegers, um, and these having been created from Dragoon regiments to fulfil a lack of light cavalry in late 1812. And on the right hand side here, some flags for both nations, different cavalry regiments, and some indications of the officers' uniforms, the different styles, different headgears, um, headgear, sorry. Uh, and some indication as well of how musicians or trumpeters and so on might be uniformed depending on which regiment you might choose. So there you go, that is an, an A3 document. I think it's one of the largest ones I've come across. I know some of them uh, have opened quite broad in the past, um, and you know this is, a, this is a good standard of information, I think. Um, whether you know a little bit about it or not, or you're coming at it from a beginner's perspective, I think this is pretty useful, to be honest. Um, it's a similar format and standard, I think, to the leaflet that came with the French infantry that was more recently released, which was a, a large uh, double-sized piece of um, information and guide booklet. So there you go, that's the leaflet. But the most interesting part of it is going to be the plastic. So within it you've got one, two, three, four horse sprues as far as I can see there, four regular trooper sprues, uh, and then that is the command sprue there. So we will take a look at each of those in slightly closer detail. So this is the command sprue for the set, uh, and as you can see here there are one and two horses available. Um, there are more sets of legs than that, but you can only um, actually build two officers from this unless you purchase some spare horses, which I presume Perry may well provide as a separate sprue on their website because they have done in the past. Um, but it gives you the different option then for the different uniform types. Um, so with the longer type coats, so the Litvakers, for example, for the Prussians or the Russians, uh, and then the um, more exposed breeches if they're going to be wearing the shorter style tunics um, or other types of frock coats. Uh, and then if we go around the sprue, you can see the different types of weapons and other accessories that are available for you to bedeck your command choices out in. So you've got straight bladed swords here, curved bladed swords, um, the complementary scabbards and arrangements that come with them. Uh, you've got some torsos there, um, you've got a Russian helmeted head, uh, Prussian dragoon style head there, and a Jaeger head on that side. Let's flip the sprue over so you can take a closer look at those. And there we go, that is the various parts of those. Uh, the horses are fairly standard, so I won't necessarily go into detail on those. And then this end of the sprue uh, is less for the officers and more for your trumpeters and so on. And as you can see here, there are the different options for the arms, um, the slightly different versions in the, um, you know, the uniforms types. So you've got the swallow's nest type arrangements, uh, and then you've got like the chevrons running up there of the lace up that arm. And then if I just move this round, you can see some of the additional parts in there. So you can see that there's a couple of Prussian heads and a Russian head as well. Um, you've got that tall, um, quite elegant Russian helmet again, uh, and a couple of the different Prussian heads here as well. So a good variety of pieces. Uh, and I'm gonna guess you can probably mix and match those with the regular trooper sprue as well. Uh, and there is also a, a Jaeger style head as well there with the long plume on top. So we'll move on to the regular trooper sprues. Now there are four of these, so presumably there must be three on each because then with the two on the command sprue, that gives you your 14 figures. So let's have a look at one of these. So to flip it over so you can see the heads on this side, uh, let's start at the top. So here we go. Uh, and you've got the different styles of arms. Um, that's fairly common to different uh, Perry cavalry sets. You've got the outstretched arm here for charging. You've got some other in um, at rest on the shoulder positions or slightly more action poses. Got the tall plumed heads here so you can create the Russian or Prussian mounted Jaegers, oh sorry, the Prussian volunteer Jaegers and Russian mounted Jaegers. Um, upside down there you've got some of the more irregularized heads for the Dragoons for each nation. 
Um, you've actually got six sets of legs on here, but again, that's so you can choose between if you want three in one style and three in the other, depending on the torso that you choose um, and the type of coat that will go with that. And then bottom here, you can see all the different weapon types as well. Uh, you've got straight bladed and curved swords down there at the bottom. And that is that's brew, so let's have a closer look at some of those parts there so you can see them. Interestingly, a number of the bodies have arms already attached for their sword arm, um, which is not something I've actually seen before. Normally you can customise those, and you can see there that there are arms that come uh, at the shoulder with the sword already on, and these ones are only held at the hand, um, so they can go on these more expressive upraised arms and I'd be interested to see how those go together and presumably with a bit of careful work if you really wanted to you could probably take them off at the shoulder and replace them with these arms um, that aren't just the hand if you really wanted to but in the second part of this video we'll go into that and how they were to build and the different options available so I'll just turn it around so you can see some of the other heads and parts the right way around We go. So you get four of those, which is pretty good. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll go on to the, the horse sprue. Now there are four of these to complement the um, regular sort of trooper sprues because the officers and uh, the command sprue rather has its own two horses on it. Um, as you can see here, for people that um, have bought Perry uh, mounted figures before, it's a fairly standard setup in that the horses are arranged in halves and fit together. Although I notice here that a bit like the uh, Austrian cavalry release, um, the heads are slightly separate here to go on. So I'm going to guess that is because there is a different arrangement yet. In fact, I can see it already. You can see on this horse's head, it's got the two parallel uh, stri uh, straps in the horse furniture running across the face. Uh, and then you've got the crossed straps on that one, depending on the um, nation and type of cavalry. A bit like the Austrian cavalry set had the, the light cavalry arrangement, which was the crossed straps, and the heavy cavalry arrangement, which was the parallel straps. I think that's the right way around. No doubt somebody will correct me if I've made a mistake there. Um, so yeah, so a fairly standard setup. And as highlighted in the uh, instructions at the beginning of the video, you can see um, there are the muskets here, that can be affixed to the miniatures, and also those Prussian canteens um, that go on the rear left-hand side, as was indicated in the instructions. But other than that, pretty straightforward for anybody that's um, sort of seen these kits before, or if you haven't, hopefully, it shows that they're not too daunting to put together. Uh, and although these halves may have been designed um, with a specific other half to go with, um, you can actually mix and match them, they'll fit together perfectly well, normally speaking, unless they've been uh, angled or curved in some way. However, the caution with that is probably that they've been matched in pairs so that the legs are in the appropriate dynamic position um, to not look bizarre because obviously horses run a certain way and they don't have their pairs of legs moving interdependently of each other. Um, anyway, that is besides anything. So that is the contents of the entire box set. Um, so. That already looks pretty exciting and interesting to me. I'll bring those bits back into the shot. And that is everything. So just a couple of final points to finish this uh, first part of this unboxing and little look inside of the new uh, Perry Cavalry. Um, first things first is that one of the things I've picked up on one of their sets uh, in the past, particularly on the um, Franco-Prussian War Infantry that I had a look at, uh, is that they have a tendency to place the heads on the sprues facing sideways. Now that comes with um, an immediate downside, which it, it puts the mould line thus running vertically down the front and back of the head. Uh, and given the fine detail, because of the high level of sculpting and then casting on faces, it's actually quite hard, even with a very, very sharp scalpel blade, to carefully trim around um, those contours of the face to get that mould line off. Um, and I've noticed that that seems only, however, to be a feature on these for some of the heads. Because you can see here, these Prussian heads are facing directly out of the sprue, which is ideal because the mould line then runs horizontally or laterally across the top of the head and down the ears. So if there are any sort of, you know, if you were to slip or it had any issues with that, um, 
it's more easily concealed and it's not going to you know, obviously compromise the use of that part. Um, whereas if you were to get that wrong on the front of the face, then you know, perhaps you've got a chap there that's lost his nose to frostbite, but it might not be hugely appealing to put on the miniature. So it'll be interesting to see um, the level of um, mould line that comes on the front of the faces where they exist, which is, as I say, as far as I can see, largely only on the Russian Dragoon heads, um, particularly as occasionally you get very slight mould slippage, as I found on some of the Franco-Prussian War infantry, and then that makes it even harder to clean that up when there's a mould line down it as well, because there's no sort of rescuing that. But we shall see when I come to put these together. And then the final little uh, look at is the bonus miniature, which came with the pack of three. So I already uh, sliced that open, so I'll unpack it. I'll take away this um, familiar white fluff, which hasn't caught the miniature too badly. Uh, and here we have the uh, bonus miniature that comes. Uh, and he's only got two parts. Interestingly, he's come cast straight onto the horse here, um, which is kind of good because um, one of my pet hates is trying to get um, the riders and their saddle furniture onto the horse in such a way as there isn't a yawning gap, either at the front or at the back underneath their bum, where you can see a, you know, usually a, a very obvious curved rigid line in the metal and a gap that um, can take some time of chipping and filing and slicing the underside of the miniature to get it to fit properly and perhaps bending the legs in or out as well. And even then it doesn't always fit great. So actually I quite like this because you know, it's all settled in place and it all lines up already, no problems. Uh, and then the other part you've been supplied with there, um, as you can see, is just a variant in each type of sword, um, which will be the only part of assembly that's actually needed, um, shy of attaching it to the base. Um, so this is the miniature, a little bit closer up. And as you can see, it's been deliberately designed um, to be generically for uh, either your Russian or Prussian officer. And it's kind of good, actually, because, um, for example, I have a large number of 28mm Prussians in my collection, and there is only a limited supply of command figures. I didn't really want to start um, rebuying sets and uh, painting the same miniatures again, although I may still do that, actually, because, you know, you can convert, as it were, by different paint jobs. Um, but, yeah, that looks like a nice, a nice miniature to me. And actually, not a huge amount of immediate cleanup that I can see in terms of mould lines and there aren't any of the funny you know metallic casting worms hanging off it immediately obviously um, so yeah a pretty smart miniature device and I, I always like things like the, the poses they put on some of these miniatures and you can see here he's meant to be in the, in the act of drawing his sword from the scabbard uh, and I do like sort of dynamic command miniatures like this so this chap will probably be becoming a, a Prussian cavalry officer to, uh, to lead my collection because uh, my intention is to create the second West Prussian Dragoons for 1813 using about 20 of the miniatures in the box set, uh, a couple of uh, mounted volunteer Jaegers to go with them, uh, and then the rest I will probably turn into um, a mixture of Russian Dragoons uh, and mounted Jaegers um, just for my own interest actually, because I don't have any Russian miniatures of this scale, but you know, it's a good excuse to incorporate a small number as well um, for my own entertainment. Anyway, that's a, that's a quick and hopefully interesting uh, look through the box set. Uh, I only just got these this morning, um, so it's a pretty sort of you know, hot debrief in terms of what these look like. Uh, and in my excitement to get this video out, it's perhaps not as polished or, or planned as I might have done in the past, uh, plus slightly different location and setup for doing the video this time. However, um, look forward to the second part, um, by which time I will have assembled um, various of these miniatures um, I'll attempt to do a variety, so I'll do some Dragoons, some Jaegers, um, some different types of uniforms, for example. Uh, and I'll let you know how I got on with building them uh, and some of those sort of little question marks I have, for example, about uh, you know, mould slippage or where the mould lines come up uh, and fitting them together. Uh, I'm particularly interested, as I say, in the, um, the fact that the sword arm comes fixed up raised on the torsos of some of the miniatures already. But we'll look at that in the second video. Uh, I'll give you slightly more ordered and um, hopefully useful thoughts uh, on how I've got on with them. So in the meantime, happy hobbying.